In the immense wilderness of Yellowstone, there are places that don't sparkle with color or burst into sky-high fountains. They growl, they bubble, they breathe, and perhaps none do it more dramatically than the mud volcano area, a landscape that seems alive, uncomfortable, and ancient all at once. As you turn off the Grand Loop Road and see the small sign that reads Mud Volcano Area, you already know something unusual is ahead. Even before you step out of the car, the air tells you, the smell hits first. It's the unmistakable scent of sulfur, of heat, of something cooking deep beneath your feet. It's the smell of the planet's insides. At first glance, the place looks gray and strange. No graceful geysers here, no crystal clear pools reflecting the sky. Instead, you find mud, thick, restless, and alive. Every bubble bursts with a soft plop, sending small drops of clay and steam into the air. It's hypnotic, almost soothing, until you remember that what you're watching is the Earth's skin, boiling. This is Mud Volcano, one of Yellowstone's most bizarre thermal areas. In the 1800s, explorers described it as a cone of mud nine meters tall, erupting so violently that mud splattered the nearby trees. That cone no longer stands. It collapsed after a powerful hydrothermal explosion in the 1870s, leaving behind the turbulent crater you see today. A few steps away lies Dragon's Mouth Spring, perhaps the most iconic feature here. You approach and hear it before you see it, a deep guttural roar echoing from a cave in the hillside. Steam billows out in waves as if some mythic creature were sleeping below, exhaling in its dreams. Early visitors were convinced there was a dragon trapped inside. Even now, it's easy to believe them. Then there are the Churning Cauldron, Black Dragon's Cauldron, and the Mud Cauldron, each one a pool of bubbling acidic clay that never quite stops moving. They hiss and spit, constantly reshaping themselves, eroding their edges, sculpting miniature landscapes that exist for only a few hours before melting back into the mud. The reason for all this activity lies below. Mud Volcano sits on a complex system of underground fissures where boiling water and volcanic gases rise from Yellowstone's vast magma chamber. The ground here is thin. In some places, only a few centimeters separate you from a pressure-filled, superheated world. These thermal features are not true geysers because the water here is too acidic and the underground plumbing too irregular to build pressure for eruptions. Instead, the acid dissolves surrounding rock, turning it into fine clay, the mud we see bubbling at the surface. It's geology in motion, creation and destruction happening at once. The air is thick with steam. The ground trembles softly under your feet. You realize that what looks like chaos is actually balance, the earth finding ways to release its heat without tearing itself apart. Scientists estimate that this area has changed dramatically over time. The original mud volcano cone likely collapsed during one of several hydrothermal explosions that rocked Yellowstone in the 19th century. Historical accounts from the 1871 Hayden Geological Survey describe mud shooting into the trees, the air thick with sulfur steam. The landscape they walked was unstable, dangerous, and mesmerizing, much like today, only louder. Long before scientists and explorers arrived, Native American tribes already knew this land well. The Shoshone and Crow peoples called the geysers the Earth's breathing holes. They understood the rhythm of this place, the exhalations of a living planet. To them, it wasn't strange or frightening. It was a sacred reminder that the ground itself has a soul. As you follow the wooden boardwalk, you move through waves of vapor that rise and vanish like ghosts. Your footsteps creak softly against the planks, and each corner reveals a new sight. A gray pit of boiling mud, a vent that wheezes like a sleeping animal, a hillside stripped bare by acid and heat. The colors surprise you. Amid the gray and brown tones, you find streaks of green, orange, even yellow, caused by thermophilic microorganisms that thrive where nothing else can survive. Some pools shimmer metallic blue under the sunlight, their surface broken by constant ripples. The air smells sharp, almost metallic, and coats your tongue with the taste of minerals. There's beauty here, but it's not comfortable beauty. It's raw, unfiltered, geological beauty, the kind that humbles you. From the top of the loop trail, you can see the forest beyond, lush, silent, and unbothered. The contrast is astonishing, peace and violence, side by side. 
You begin to realize that Yellowstone is a living paradox, creation and destruction dancing under the same sky. The sulfur cauldron, just north of the area, has a pH of about 1.2, nearly as acidic as battery acid. The mud volcano trail is short, just under one mile, but it packs an entire planet's worth of energy into that distance. On cool mornings, the vapor drifts across the road like fog, turning the valley into a scene from another world. Every few years, earthquakes subtly shift the underground plumbing, changing which vents bubble more or less, so the landscape never looks the same twice. By late afternoon, the crowd thins out. You linger near Dragon's Mouth Spring, watching the steam rise and fall in rhythm with the sound, like the breathing of some invisible being. The sunlight catches the vapor, turning it gold. It feels like standing at the edge of creation. And that's when it hits you. This isn't chaos, it's continuity. The same forces that once built continents and mountains are still here, still speaking, still shaping. We just rarely stop long enough to listen. You leave the boardwalk with the smell of sulfur still on your clothes, your hair damp with steam. But something else lingers too. The sense that you've witnessed the earth not as scenery, but as a living thing. A reminder that beneath all our noise and movement, the planet still breathes. Slow, patient, eternal, 